Hi, today we're at Dartmouth Park in the Sandwell Valley area of Birmingham and we're looking for a bird called a grey phalarope. Now they're not too rare in the Midlands, they do turn up most winters or probably in the autumn is the most common and I've never been to this park before but the nice thing about it is you don't have to find the bird today, you just have to find the crowd. The bird watchers and the photographers that will be here drawn for this bird, I've just got to look for them and not the bird. And a crowd of bird watchers and photographers is much easier to see than a very small grey phalarope. And a feature of phalaropes is they tend to be very confiding birds. It's a bit of a contrast to how it used to be when I was in my 20s. You could go a whole year without bumping into another bird photographer. Now they're absolutely everywhere. But it saves you looking for the bird, just look for the crowd. I've carried my stool down here because when I'm doing the video, I don't want to be lying down on the floor. For stills photography, I'll get down as low to the water as I can. But that's all good for video, where you've got to manually focus, especially the slow motion video, you've got no choice. It's got to be manual focus. And when you're lying on the floor, you've got to stretch forward to this focusing ring and follow the bird. You just can't do it. Your, your body's just at the wrong angle. So for the video, I'm going to spend the first hour or two working on the video. So I bought my stall for that. I want to be low, but I can't get down on the floor. Now, phalaropes are very fast moving birds. Some of this footage is taken with autofocus, some of it with manual focus. There's no EXIF data, so I can't tell which is which. Here, I've slowed it down just a half speed. And I think it makes it more watchable. When you see it going at normal speed, it's really just too fast, too jerky. It's a very fast moving bird, not only difficult to keep it in focus, it's difficult to keep it in the frame, it's rushing about all over the place. Now we've really slowed it down, this is at 240 frames per second, so roughly 10 times slow. And this has to be manual focus because the camera won't autofocus at this speed. I was hoping the slow motion footage would show me what the bird was eating. You certainly can't make it out at normal speed but I still can't decide when I'm watching slow motion either. It's clearly not just insects, which is what I expected it to be eating. One or two things you have to look out for, in one or two places there's a gathering of reeds and feathers, and so when the phalarope's close to those, you've got to avoid it, or else you get a messy background. Now over the years I've photographed grey phalarope quite a few times in the Midlands. They tend to turn up, they stay here for about a week on various ponds. When I first got here today I was a bit disappointed because it's so windy and therefore the waves on the water, it's too choppy. I wanted smooth water. But in actual fact I'm quite liking it. It looks quite good when I'm looking through the viewfinder. I'll probably come back on another day when there's no wind blowing to get the smooth water, especially early in the morning, get here at 7 o'clock, there's a good chance of the water being smooth, then you get the nice reflections. But now we're going to go for the choppy shots. I've got enough video now, so I'm just waiting for the bird to come up a little bit closer, and then I'm going to go down on the floor. It just always has more impact when you get down level with the water. And I'm only, only about one foot above the water level here, and it's a relatively clean bank relatively. Here we go. The light was constantly changing but I preferred it when there was a bit of blue sky because then you get some blue reflection in the water and then I really appreciated the waves and the way the phalarope bounces about on the top. It's just like a floating cork. Even doing stills photography is difficult. It keeps it in focus, but it's very hard to keep the bird in the middle of the frame. What I could do is make use of the, the rear monitor. I could pull that out 
and turn it around so it's facing upwards and I could sit on my stool and still see the bird and be able to keep it in the frame but when you're doing a fast moving bird like a grey phalarope it's much easier to have your eye to the viewfinder. This is a difficult bird to follow and it's harder to do it through the screen than through the viewfinder. It would be a lot more comfortable if I was up there but this is definitely better for following fast action. The biggest problem I'm going to have today is the exposure. We have a very pale bird against dark water. I could swap to manual exposure, but the light is constantly varying. One minute the sun's shining, then it's dark cloud, then it's white cloud. I'd be constantly adjusting the manual exposure. So I'm shooting automatic aperture priority and I'm constantly changing the exposure with the compensation dial, which is the front dial for me. That's how I've got it set up. On average, I'm shooting one and a third stops under but I'm having to change that. Sometimes it's only two thirds under and sometimes it's one and two thirds under. Depends how big the bird is in the frame. If the bird comes very large in the frame, the metering has got all that white to, to meter against. So it's going to be much closer to accurate. Then when the bird goes further away and it's just a very small white bird in the water, then I have to underexpose even further because the metering is not being affected by that white. And I've always said what you should do is stick to one metering pattern. doesn't matter if you're spot meter, it will still be wrong. You might have to overexpose if you're spot metering. But if you use one metering pattern, over time you get used to it. And you start to compensate, really just from experience. Just started to rain again, not for the first time. I'm going to pack up now. But I will probably come back in the morning because the forecast is quite good. Not just that it will be brighter, but no wind tomorrow. And that's what I want. First thing, if I can get here for 6.30 in the morning, the water could be nice and smooth. Well, I did my bit. I got up and the sun got up too. But unfortunately, there was still just a bit of a wind. And you don't need much wind to create ripples on the water. There was no sign of the fallow rope first thing either, but it did turn up. There's a red reflection in the water from a brick wall and the bird just swam into that briefly. Hopefully I've got some pictures of that with a, a bit of colour in the water. The further the bird will go away from me, the more colourful the water. But they're phalaropes and they are just so tame and obliging. The bird just comes so close to you. This is taken with a GoPro camera now. This is a super wide angled lens and at times the bird is less than half a metre away from me. The Canada Goose had more of an idea on where I wanted the fallow oak to be. This picture was taken in the year 2008. It was in the Midlands, but that's a sort of nice sunset I would like. And here, another one elsewhere, but in smooth water. This is the effect I usually really like, with a nice reflection under the bird. As it was still too windy, I decided I was going to go elsewhere. And as I started walking back towards the car, I saw this mess on the floor. And I was a bit puzzled as to what it was. It was only in one location, not underneath other trees. So this was worth hanging around a bit for. So I stood to watch. What was coming into the tree? I suspected the ring-necked parakeets, but it wasn't. It was the grey squirrel. And I don't know what the tree is. I don't think it's a British tree. But the squirrels were definitely very interested. In fact, there was six squirrels at one point in this tree or underneath it, eating the bits that have fallen down. Sometimes they hang about in the tree eating them. And this is something I don't do very often, handheld video. I can do it, I can keep the camera steady enough so long as I'm at the 150mm end of the lens rather than the 400mm. Thanks for watching.